right? So I'm recording here, there, right? Okay, good. All right. Normally, when I actually like working with the uh, teams at my kind of personal face, there, okay, face, there, right? Okay? I don't have any kind of uh, situations that I cannot still record. But the problem that maybe we might have uh, from my kind of account, that basically they actually have record that okay, the student cannot retrieve back again those videos when when they using uh, when they actually enter basically this meeting there okay uh, they can actually write a uh, preview back again those videos there uh, the other account that i have basically that miss anis actually have add for me okay i never thought that i actually have that uh, another account that based on this uh, Taylor kind of email there right? But when I actually use that account, what I actually have, uh, what we call that uh, face basically in the situations, I cannot retrieve my own videos there. The video that I record from my account over here, Faisal.ag, I can retrieve. But the video that I record from that uh, my code numbers, 110255 at sd taylor college edu there right i cannot retrieve those videos i don't know why right? okay uh, that kind of thing i have to uh, improvise back in tomorrow basically i have the ivn kind of classes there because the ivn classes there's a huge kind of number of students there so i don't have any other choice because the student wants to come to the uni there right so i have to go over there and work on those modules using the computers kind of lab that we have there right okay so let me take a look okay recap back again what we actually have been going through last week okay because you guys can actually retrieve this uh, what we call that uh, screen sharing all right, Alfie, there again. This is your characters here. Right, this is one of the earliest characters that I can see from your works using line tools, the shape tools, I hope, in Adobe Animate and After Effects, right? Alfie, this is your first time using uh, Adobe Animate and Flash, right? Uh, yeah. All right, this is from Wen Jun. All right, Wen Jun using. Uh, are, are you using uh, Adobe Animate to sketch the basic structures? And yeah, then you. Okay. Good. Okay, may I know, guys, okay, how well basically you've been practicing your skills of drawings there? Okay, this is a very good kind of summarization on the. Twelve principle of animations. You guys remember one thing: when I actually learn by myself these twelve principle of animations, I take a number of years to implement what I've learned on my own. There, right? okay, without having any videos, kind of what we call that reference samples, only relying on the practical on job that I have with my late mentor basically there right okay at the times that was in 1997 or 98 if i'm not mistaken 98 there right okay so i actually learned basically these 12 principles on my own and also with the guide of my mentor there right, okay and then when i actually go into the working kind of process i also quite have this kind of very informal discussion on job kind of discussion with my colleagues okay i've learned also from my uh, friends they have more kind of understanding that kind of job principle than me right not like nowadays basically okay if i give you guys one video okay to do some revisions it's a, it's, it's something a little bit more like a a, a, a mobile kind of uh, flexible kind of video reference or information that you can get 
direct okay to develop those kind of understanding by watching that video set and you can summarize them you can actually copy if you want to in those google uh what we call that uh connections that we have there right okay so it's quite very blessed and for me you should feel more grateful because of the time that you have here most of the information that you want to learn even though you still need the guidance there i'm not saying that you cannot because not all people can learn by themselves there right i think around hundreds maybe one or two only there okay who can actually develop the skill by, by themselves most of human being most people still need the guidance from direct kind of guidance from from the mentor lecturers teachers directly so those are the things that, that happens nowadays but there is no such thing as impossible right okay? that we cannot actually get, go through with it all right like um alfie you haven't actually submit the summarizations is that right make sure you submit them uh, i just i just submitted okay 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 good all right don't just copy paste from your friends works huh? <laughs> all right all right even though right now what i think that we actually go through with your minds from your from video revision that you have done hopefully and also the summarization that you have done right now you feel a bit more like a floating kind of information because we haven't actually applied yet but what basically i want to advise for you guys okay animations is all about understanding not only principles but developing your skill at the same time especially in 2d animations traditional and 2d animations there 3d animations we basically are going to be relying most of our skills other than our animation skills but our technical skills on the tools there right we are, are going to be relying right most of those i think around 85 percent 85 percent on the technical uh knowledge and understandings using the tools but 2d animations other than we actually have the tool that can help us to guide us to develop more understanding and also make our job a bit more easier not more harder there, okay than the than the real traditional animations there right but what I can say for you guys here for 2D animations or traditional animations, cell animations or digital cell animations, the knowledge of prep principles is basically is a is a balance with the with your drawing and animation skills there. They're going to go uh, at the same kind of phase directly. Right, it's okay with me, right? If you don't have webcam, there, right? Okay. okay, welcome with me there, right? Okay, we are actually as you record, right? Okay, we just started. I just explained a little bit there, okay, of the things that you you have to face and you have to get ready, okay, in order to develop your technical skill and also your knowledge and understanding. When it comes to 2D animations, there okay, animation fundamentals, there are okay? those other things that we have to go through first. All right, because we don't have any webcam there, okay, but maybe I'm going to show you guys a bit, a little bit more from there. All right, I want to go through first, okay, for the first sessions over here, okay, what you guys have been going through, okay, for the past few days. All right, this. Uh, This character basically, okay, uh, live here, you there, right? Yeah. Do you actually separate the the parts of the body parts, okay, of this character, or you just draw straight ahead? Um, because when I when I open my anime, right, it had it had problems. So 
I kind of drew it in Illustrator first, but I separate each character by their layers, and then I imported it into Animate. Okay. Yeah. So what are the problems that you have in the Adobe ad ad Animate? It, uh, I think it's a computer problem. It's like, it keeps not responding. <laughs> Why don't you uninstall that animate? Just install Adobe Flash first, right? The old version, if you have. Okay. Um, I actually imported it okay. into my friend's computer, and I exported. What is it? Yeah. Yeah. And it's actually. But for me, okay, for for our purpose of. Huh? Yeah. Now, 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 already you can work on it. Yeah. It's fine already. Okay. 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 Yeah. But I tested it so out can... in Animate, right? Um, I can actually separate the mm -hmm. body parts. Okay, good. Because you already actually uh, created in in different parts uh, in Adobe in, in Adobe AI, there, right? Yeah. Okay. It works fine in Animate. So uh. make sure, guys. Okay. Mm -hmm. Works fine, right? Okay, good. Yeah. Works fine is very good, okay. So glad to see it, right? Okay. So so you guys, okay. Whatever that you're going to go through with your design, like this right here, when we design first, make sure you separate all the parts, the important part that you want to animate there. Right? Okay? Normally from yeah, when we design the body parts first, right? The first body part that we actually uh, design, we group them up there, right? Okay? Eyes separately group there, right? Okay? Uh, mouth and also teeth can be separate, can be actually right, uh, can be the same. Same parts because we can actually animate the lip sync later on there, okay? Different kind of lip syncs. Uh, the hands, basically, if there is a two different kind of parts of the limbs there, okay? Uh, for the hand itself, you guys also can separate if you want to, all right? Otherwise, we just improvise when we animate, when we draw them, we can stretch it out, right? Okay? Because I love when students, and I would encourage students when they come to learn these rough principles, you are going to develop that kind of an understanding while you design first, not before, not from your animations there. So when we design the characters itself there, right, we need to imagine basically or plan basically the motions that might or the pose that might these characters are going to be, to be, to be show, to be act basically, act, right, acting there, right? the characters should be acting there, right. Uh, before we go into animate them, because from there you know whether the, those in, those characters are possible to do some exaggerations on the movements there, right? Those are the things that we we have to think basically out from the box, okay? When it comes to animations there, but the proper principle will help us to basically to remind, right? The proper principle is not only the guide or the rules, but to remind ourselves when we animate some things. We have to make sure the third principle will make the character animation look more fun. Right? Because the difference between live actions or people who actually wrote to scope those animations with the animations uh, basically from uh, from uh, purely from the animators there, right? Okay? It's all the difference is all about the third principle that 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 has been applied there. Like Stress and squash is one of the importance okay for the character animations, exaggerations okay, and timing also it is a part of it okay to make sure that we keep, we're not actually doing extra job from there because most people who that actually doesn't know about timings who doesn't actually care about timing they okay, they always avoid them. I'm actually when I first animate those characters also, I'm I'm actually right doesn't actually aware about this one again. Okay? So when it comes to animation, even though I actually like the animation itself, I like to to love to animate those characters. But the things that I, I always have in my mind is where to stop, even though I know where basically I already start there, okay, those drawing or the motions, but I don't know where to stop there, okay, because of the timings, knowledge is not been uh, developed from there, okay, because because I always thought that I have to do those straight ahead animations without having the planning on the post to post first, okay. So remember, okay, the animation has two different kind of motions there, but straight ahead animations basically they has also a 
point A to point B to complete the right, okay? And they always, uh, we actually use those straight head animation also, also when it comes to rotoscoping, right? So types of animations, right? Types of animations. So there's a few types of animation that we can actually go through, even though there is no voices in my, uh, from, from our works directly, for our lecture right now, okay? But I would, I will basically share to you guys also these videos just to make sure that you guys have a little bit kind of understanding. Basically, we have 15 types of animation in this world, right? 15 types of animation in this world there, right, okay? So I just want to give you guys a bit kind of uh, introductions here, right? Because this knowledge basically need also be applied to you guys in order to develop that kind of understanding there. All right? This is Faris kind of works, All right? All right? I think okay. You actually separate this, the the parts there, right? But I think you trying to use. Uh, uh, Pencil tool or brush tools for yeah, your brush. Is there, right? Yeah. Mm. And using mouse, right? Yeah. Is it? Why don't you use those uh, mouse to draw those? Uh, you try to create the characters a little bit more like very free form, right? Yeah. But the proportion can be can be improved there, right? Okay? Yep. Uh, what I want to share with you guys, okay, later on, okay, about demonstrations. I want to share also, all right, how you, we actually can sketch first our ideas before we are going to transfer into those, uh, those uh, computer kind of works, right? Okay? Those are the things basically. I want you guys to practice them, right? Okay? To do it as a part of your routine. A part of your routine that not only just. Uh, to get to know about those uh, way of working in Adobe Animate or Adobe Flash, but we avoid basically, all right, uh, on the on the ground methods, the foundations of creating those design before we animate them, all right? Because, all right, if you're going to go through with this animation video later, okay, we have one is traditional animation. Animations is mostly hand drawn and also self animated there. But Disney basically is one of the pioneers there, right? Okay. And of course, okay, from these anime, traditional animations, okay, okay, we're using a light box, we're using papers there, self animated papers there, and we're using a, a lot of drawings, right? Okay, and so millions kind of drawings, thousand kind of drawings, there, okay, where to to complete basically one single kind of animation for one hour or 90 minutes kind of full piece there all right so that are back in the days there again okay? now now actually been been transformed be, be improvised into adobe animate toon boom harmonies there, there's a lot of few kind of animated kind of software also that they had been developed okay, for modern animators Right, you guys can see this video later on, right? Okay, okay how actually they create them, right? Okay? Now traditional animations, okay, uh, they actually transfer into those digital medias there, okay? We can use tablet, we can use Wacom, we can use Syntex, okay, uh, to create those kind of motions there. All right, right. right. About two D animations, okay, basically is traditional animations like cell animations is all. Also, a part of the 2D animations there. I don't want you guys to get confused. Like a lot of people say, what well, basically 2D and traditional, but 2D animations they divide into two different kind of animations. All right, computer animations that using 2D software or traditional cell animations there that using cell or drawing papers to draw. All right, and, uh, what we call that those animations are uh, movements, and then they scan transfer into computer. Back again, okay. So back to back working, right? Okay, and they are going to combine together there, right? But what you guys experience right now, right? We start to animate those characters, or we draw the characters. We can entirely draw everything fully digital, there, right? 
for some people who actually did not actually be quite comfortable to sketch their ideas uh, using sketchbooks if you can actually rely on photoshops or any kind of drawing device other than adopt animate or adopt flash you guys can do it as well right my kind of experience before when i because i start with the traditional media there okay so when i come to sketch any any kind of characters there, okay? any kind of design, I will start to sketch in my sketchbooks. I scan at that time there is no camera or, or phone directly, smartphone directly. I'm scanning all the drawings, transfer into Photoshop, I redraw back again, or I'm transferring into Adobe Flash, I'm going to trace them back. Okay. So computer animation basically it's a 3D animation there. If you want to specify okay, computer animations, there's a dual computer the animations also flash also could be the animations there add up animate there right again and 3d animations there all right cgi that right? could be the graphic imaginary image uh, imaginary there right? again cgi there right? again so it came it actually is a, a part of those computer animations there toy story is, is a 3d animations right okay but this this 3d animation they came from puppet or stop motions animations they came from that play animations there so there's a there's a number of animations name that we actually i can actually expose to you guys but we are going to focus on the, the animation there so this is a part of those uh, modern days kind of animations kind of applications and techniques using computer 3d computer animations there. so don't get confused there, okay? some people doesn't know there okay? i i actually thought a, a lot with a layman there okay even though my uncle auntie my nephews right and also my cousin there okay, who doesn't actually in our line there okay, in our careers there they thought okay they don't know how actually they create this kind of animation there if you check look pixar animation dreamwork animation there, okay they use a computer generated kind of imaginary directly to the animation book they doesn't know how it works there okay. they doesn't know that right so we can explain them. This is a 3D animation, three-dimensional anime computer animations. They create using computers there. But before they create this, this all these kind of characters in computers, they start with a drawing first. The drawing can be on the sketchbooks or maybe using computers as well, right? Before they model the characters itself there, right? Play animations, puppet animations, basically, it came. Uh, those are basically the traditional. Uh, what we call the 3D animations, traditional 3D animations. That's why I said, okay, there's a. If I'm if I'm not as mistaken, what I've known basically, okay, that there is a 15 type of animations in this world. Maybe uh, now basically they have more from there. So I don't have to list for you, you guys first, right? Okay, because I just want to give you guys a little bit kind of understanding, right? Okay, motion graphics. All right, this is going to be the animations. All right, three D computer animations. Even okay, if you take a look at Aladdin, there okay. Have you saw Aladdin before? The Disney Aladdin, there okay. They're combining two D animations and three D animations at the same time. The character they create for Aladdin, basically the character animations, is basically two D. Right, animations, traditional animations, there, drawing hand drawings, but most of the environment, especially when they involve a very heavy, complex kind of camera works. All right, camera works there, cinematography is there, right? That you guys, most of some of you guys have learned that, right? We'll learn that, even though we're not going to use the computer, what we call that uh, camera works and computers there, right? Okay, uh, but the knowledge that you're going to apply when you staging basically those uh what we call the flows of your stories you have to use this kind of cinematographic kind of elements there okay or principle from there all right they're using computer generated kind of images there right okay to work with that kind of background right? because why because easy for them to tracking and they don't have to draw the whole kind of complex uh kind of uh, what we call that uh camera kind of works Right in 2D, there okay, because there is a limitation between 2D animations, right? right? That's why in modern days, right? I think more than 15 years ago, there, okay, they actually have experiments 
in this kind of matters there, right? Because I, because when I first saw the combination between 2D and 3D animations together in one films, in one content, basically, when I when I actually watched Beauty and the Beast, Disney Beauty and the Beast, there, okay? So I will actually show you guys okay later on about that, okay? How actually they combine them. So stop motion animations. Basically, it's a traditional like a motion graphics. Basically, is for multimedia kind of animated students works there, right? Okay? But you guys also can explore there, right? Okay? Because you guys learn after the fact there, right? And if you guys learn also or 3D modeling there later on, right? Even with 3D animation, also have motion graphics there, right? Motion graphics kind of elements. So, um, it's a part of those animations there, right? Okay? So it doesn't actually carry out only for uh what we call that only for character animations only but our kind of models i will focus more on the character animations why because it's more complex and more harder than the motion graphics there but the knowledge that you can bring from that 12 principles of animation you can bring also for your motion graphics kind of uh, presentations right like stress and squash for the motion text there Right, exaggerations, right, or those kind of things, timing back again, right, okay, uh, the appealing of the representation also, right, okay, of those design also is a part of it, right, okay? So for animators, especially for students of uh, creative multimedia or multimedia kind of students, we need to develop this both kind of understanding, type of graphics kind of understanding, design kind of understanding, animations kind of understanding, Character design kind of understandings there, the background design kind of understanding at the same time, and illustrations, drawings, understanding there, okay, uh, for for develops your skills, okay. All right, stop motion animations. All right, if you look at the uh, one of the uh, what we call that popular animations, okay, previously like. Mm, there's a lot there, right? Yeah, there's a lot there. Okay. One of it is came from Sean the Sheeps, right? It's a stop motion animations there. All right. Uh, Team Burton's basically, right? Okay, like uh, Nightmare Before Christmas, right? They use uh, fully animated kind of stop motion characters there using clay. They use a specific industrial clay and also a wired right, okay, to work on that. And they create all these kind of models just like they create the toys there, right? Okay. Uh, art men kind of what we call the animations, right? They create those kind of what we call that. Uh, most of the artworks basically using the claymations, puppet animations. Okay, this is one of also one of my favorite, there, okay, South Park there. It's a stop motion animations, but they use a cut out animation style, all right? Cut out animation style there, okay? So they use paper cut out there. In the first few kind of uh, earliest kind of yeah, kind of what we call that animations episodes there, right? Okay, series there. Okay, later they're using flash, all right, okay. And also for their movies, if you have seen the movies of the South Park there, okay, um, they using basically Maya there, okay. But they're applying the same methods of 2D cutout animations for the whole entire movie there. But they add a few kind of uh, flames, visual effects there, okay, using computer generated also for those, uh, some of the effects there, okay. But the animation wise, the animation styles, even though they use 3D to map over the characters into the 3D models, flat 3D models there, and they animate exactly like a 2D cutout animation. There. They remain the style and the concept itself. So my kind of understanding and also perceptions in animations, I don't actually rely on the, I don't actually find a specific style specifically only can be used to, pro, to develop uh, animations there. All right, so if you can actually explore more than that, it's, it's, it's more it's more grateful and more better for for the animators itself. There, right? Okay. So 
This is also one of the stop motions, paper cut out there. They use silhouette kind of methods of style there, all right? So silhouette, you know, they're right, is a part of the techniques of photography, they right, okay? They, they're applying the contrast, depth of fields, emphasizations there, focal point, and a very solid kind of uh, what we call the presentations there, okay? To tell the stories, okay? Just like uh, shadow play, wayang kulit there, okay? Shadow play in, in Malaysian, traditional kind of Malaysian and Indonesian kind of what we call that. Uh, and also uh, kind of what we call that uh, traditional kind of uh, entertainments there, all right? So this is what I want to But we can actually achieve all these kind of methods also back again using Flash and Adobe Animate. It's a matter of how actually you like look at things. But of course, to design Toy Stories like this one, you cannot use Adobe Animate and Flash. Lah. Okay. But puppet animation, stop motion, we can. Okay, this is also one of the stop motion animations. Right? Toy kind of stop motion animations like Lego, right, okay? But this is also one of the popular kind of style nowadays that people actually use to work with uh, animation for YouTube channels, there, okay? If you love toys very much, you can actually, what we call that experiment with your handphone cameras, right, okay? Or your iPhone, that okay, to, to create this kind of stop motions, kind of motions for your, for your animation works, there, right? Okay? It's quite interesting, is there, okay? Quite interesting for you to for us to explore, right? So this is what we call pixelations, there, okay? This pixelation, pixel, pixel, pixelations, there, okay? Sorry, there, okay? Right. The first human or person actually experiment this kind of style. Okay, his name is Norman McLaren, there, right? Okay, Norman McLaren, there, okay? He's one of the uh, animators in one of the college universities, right? Around, I think, around the 1970s, there, right? Okay, we can go through with the history there, right? Okay, so it's based on the stop motion animations, but they use pixelation style because they use photos to animate each frames of the movements of the person of the character itself, there, right? Okay, they use human being. Right? Okay, that's a part of it. It's quite interesting kind of work there. So, I'm actually experiment some of the animations. Okay, I can actually show you guys also some of the animations works that I've done before there. Right? Okay. okay, other than that, basically it's all about the promotions of these uh, YouTube channels there. Right? Okay. So right now, basically for my kind of lecturing kind of uh, what we call that. Uh, Items that I can actually provide for the students, YouTube is one of the best. I just have to use my own kind of understanding to explain back again about what basically we can actually go through from there. So, YouTube, thanks to YouTube, there, Marky, I can't wait. They can make a modern monetization basically on YouTube there, okay? But I don't know when there, okay? Because I'm quite, quite tied with my kind of what we call that works there. But I try basically on my own terms okay to create also these methods of learning experience with the students okay uh, by using a very raw kind of tactics method of working right here okay. so i want to give you guys a bit kind of examples there. what basically i actually have done before other than the 2d animation i've i hope you guys actually have have basically watched most of the videos there, right? Okay? And of course, it's three, these 3D animations I'm not actually doing on my own. There, this is a this is an effort from my old companies, right? Okay? Sorry, that I I'm actually uh, design all the characters and create also call create also the stories, okay, for one of for the series itself, there, right? uh what i can actually share with you guys here okay i want to show you guys i think i already show you guys here there right i don't know whether i share okay this is one of my 1997 to 1999 kind of 
uh, animation that I created for my FYP projects there, okay? Where were you guys in 1999? All right. When I first create this kind of design, I don't have any kind of formal kind of education and knowledge there. We, we, we actually learn a little bit kind of 2D animations, but we don't actually go into depth and details. Okay. But this is one of my earliest animations that I actually work it for my FYP projects. I create an alias there named Glob there. Okay. So I design and create all these characters from scratch and I'm experimenting with sand animations there, even though the quality is not that quite uh, clear there, okay? But I'm using two different kind of animations here, uh, three different kind of animations there, not two there, okay? First of all, I am using hand-drawn animations, but I'm not using cell papers animations there. I'm using a sugar papers kind of materials and I'm going to animate each day at least four to five different kind of scenes all right I'm using light box at the same time there okay one of the reason I'm I'm using uh, sugar papers because I want to have the textures there okay the textures of my own drawing okay when I come to uh, what we call that uh, presented these kind of animations there okay so i basically i'm i'm I, i'm i'm actually having a, a very quite i'm preparing a very quite detailed kind of storyboard for these projects there because when we actually have two or two semesters only to prepare those uh what we call that uh, our final year projects but i have this kind of privilege of time and concern and also awareness that I create okay we have eight semesters for degree at the times okay eight semesters there four semesters uh, for for diploma and another four semesters basically for our degree program there okay at the times so what I do there okay because I'm actually quite close with my seniors there Right, I'm I'm doing some sort of like assist my seniors on their final year projects when we when I was in semester three. So when I was that stage, when I actually have job, what we call the scout with my seniors, I'm actually have I'm already have my own visions what I'm going to do for FYP for eight semesters there. So I'm preparing myself from fourth semesters until the final year there okay so i have around four five five six seven eight around four semesters to prepare so i start to begin to buy some books all right and i start to develop those characters there i want to create alien because i was very very in into those alien ufo at the time there okay i would rather read some of the books about aliens right and then i'm going to uh, what we call that find more information okay, from books because at my time that at that kind of era okay i have a very limitations kind of access for internet directly the only time that i have if i'm not mistaken when i was going back to my hometown to find some reference there so I'm using a traditional Photoshop kind of motion graphic for this motion uh, motion for this for this motion text no after effects there is no uh, what we call that adult flash bracket right? the only thing that I have at the time is macro media directors and photoshops so I'm animate all this kind of motion glow effects and also motion uh what we call that blur effects there okay frame by frames okay frame by frames there you can see there right so i'm using frame by frame for this motion effects this is first and first style of animations there then i'm using hand drawing animations using sugar papers charcoals 
white Conte charcoal and color pencil from there. All right. So uh, and and all those kind of what we call that uh, transitions that I create. I'm using frame by frame in Photoshop, there, guys. There is no After Effects. I don't know how to use After Effects at the times. I don't know how to use Premiere at the time. There, okay? The thing that I'm relying is Macromedia Directors, not Flash. Because we learn Macromedia Directors to do some interact, interactive kind of works, like coding there, and then also some simple kind of animations there at the times. All right. So, and I'm using a super imposed collage directly using photo photo transferring photocopy kind of image transferring there for this KLCC kind of images there right and this is basically a photo collage directly of my friends at the times but the movement is quite limitation directly it's quite limited there And some of the some of the motions I combining in Photoshop frame by frame there. So other than that, uh, other than what we call that, I have a very minimum kind of requirement for technologies at that times. But I using a full kind of understanding my imaginations and knowledge, right? To to create. Okay, this is also using Photoshop there. These effects. Okay, this logo, motions, logo kind of presentations of the titles, I'm using Photoshop there. All right. So if you see there. There, I'm using Photoshop there, okay? Frame by frame Photoshop effects there, right? So this is basically I'm using my cameras there. All the effects basically manually been done in Photoshop. Yeah, coming soon, and never been coming and any more there right again. But I'm creating some of the, the paintings, digital paintings there, some commercial kind of books based on this club characters there, or based on this club kind of styles of characters there right But I actually have improvised a lot. Okay, those are the things that those are the days there, guys. Okay, the things that I've done. Okay, in my student years there. Okay. To work with those animations there, right? Um, I have done also some uh, paper cut animations, right? Paper cut kind of animations, basically there okay, for uh, my my own personal kind of experiments there. Uh, where is it? okay? This one, I think this is the one there, right? Okay. I think this is the one there. So check a look there, right? So these animations, I'm using paper cut animations, stop motions kind of techniques there in Photoshop. Right? This is me basically there that time there, right? So I experiment with some 3D kind of animations at a time using 3D Max. This is a uh, piece of less animations using magazines. This is one paper cut out. I am actually imaging, uh, experimenting with a paper cut art in Photoshop, just like South Park kind of animation. I'm using my own face, right? I improvise a little bit of those images there. I draw everything right here frame by frame and animate them back, right? In Photoshop, there everything in Photoshop, there, right? It's a bit kind of collage, right? Okay, for my brothers there, right? Okay. Now this balloon basically in Photoshop, there, right? This guy also, okay, I think this is women, I think, again, guy or women, I think he's also from Photoshop. I superimpose them back again and animate those movements. I want to experiment at the time there, okay. This hand drawing animations, did I experiment a few there, okay. And also my morphing kind of animation styles there, okay. Using my face, all right. I think around 50 plus uh, 50 frame, 50 kind of drawings that I have included on this kind of drawings there for the motion test already. Yeah, that's the one. 
so those are the things that I've been experimenting okay, with the techniques that I've learned, that I actually learned by myself that actually works with it, okay? Other than that, okay, I want to show you guys also animatic tests. All right, a lot of people always thought that, okay, when they want to create animations, when they have the story, when they have the storyboard, they straight away create the animations there. Yes, you can do this kind of things there, but sometimes your planning are going to be burnt out there, okay? Your, your planning are going to be a little bit kind of off from the project there. One of the best way when you have the storyboard with you, try to create the animatics first. Animatics, the animation test, or the flow kind of story motion test before you animate the whole entire scene or episode there, okay? So this is my animatic test when I was doing some opening segment for one of the montage directly. I will show you guys the final montage directly. Sorry, there is no sound there, guys. Basically, I'm combining okay some of my Finnish animation and also some of my flow. This is the flows there for my storyboard there, right? Okay, when I want to show to the clients there what I basically I'm going to plan from there. So the first part basically I already did some of the efforts to show my efforts to the client that I can animate. This is the style of animations that I'm going to produce for this series, and then so I'm if I have time I'm going to give a little bit extra for the clients there. Right, to show basically they want to combine some TV anime style for this program because uh, this basically a live drama event there, okay? But they use animation as a montage there at the time there. It's a 2009 there, okay? So then from there, they want they want me to give a little bit kind of look and feel of anime a bit, a Japanese kind of style a little bit because the story of this family, if I'm not mistaken, I didn't ha I haven't saw the, 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 the full length of those episodes directly. Uh, they said that uh, the, the father basically has a huge influence of, of Japanese kind of movements directly. That's why I'm using this kind of concept to work with it. Okay? I'm using okiyo-e, kind of what we call that, uh, uh, paintings there, wave paintings there, a part of it. This is the flow directly. Animatic flows, but there's a few kind of animated flow we can actually use also for our presentation. This is a very still images directly. Just want to show all the all the flow in itself directly. The concept, the flow itself there. Because when the client actually understand right the ideas from there, then I can improvise. Still can be improvised directly. So we cannot actually judge directly, okay, whatever that we show for the animatics is going to be exactly like that. We can improvise here. All right, the final kind of what we call that presentations were basically like this. Right, so those are the final touch there, okay? On those animations there. So if you take a look nowadays, if you want to do a lot of revisions there, if you enjoy yourself on animations, there's a lot of reference in front of you. My times, I spend a lot of my times on my TVs, 
my family house TV, my, my, my parents' home there again, and I was your age, I would rather watch all those animated series, right, okay? if I don't want to do some, any kind of drawings or any kind of books, I would spend my time browsing Nickelodeon, browsing Cartoon Networks, browsing Disney channels there, and browsing so some history at the time there right also and I also browsing some discovery channel that actually plays one of the one of the animated kind of documentaries there okay on animations there okay they call flat there, okay so I I actually have my mind of those animations and look in different kind of perspective other than other people's there because of the exposure that I get from Astro not promoting extras I, I didn't not actually write going to subscribe extra okay anymore right uh, because yes because as long as what we got even I'm working with some of the, this kind of work that gave me extra a lot okay because not from direct to me directly the client give it to me over there he looks there so basically I have one two three four content that I create using Astro directly. So this is basically uh, my old kind of show reels there, right? That I experiment with a lot of different kind of techniques there using photos, photos, photo state machines. All right. That I actually animate all these fluffy these frame by frame in photocopy kind of machine. All right. So some, some simple work to the animations, flash animations here. Because this is the old kind of show reel, okay? So the quality also doesn't look fine there, okay? In terms of the HD kind of formats there, right? So this is basically one of one of my earliest kind of uh, pilot kind of animations with a small group of people there. This is one of the animations that you see before there, okay? So this is also one of my stop motion kind of experimentals using scanning there okay i'm using uh, what we call that scanning machine to animate all those kind of motions there and i transfer back again to a macrometer animate uh, what we call the directors there to to work on that or add up by the flash there from there This is basically from one of the cooking program that I create. The very got a montage also, but but for RTM there, right? This is some of the experimental music video that I create for one of the one of our members there. Using combination with 3D animations a bit, right? This is one of the samples of animations that I get for one of my friend, Yusuf Gaja. If you know him, there is one of the famous painters, students, naive students painters there. Last read this. So this is basically okay for one of the program also <laughs> that I combine in digital cut out photo collage and 2D animations at the same time there, right? So basically a, a mo motion motion text there for the titles. This is one of the compilations of experiment on the 3D characters with a live 
with a live uh, kind of what we call that environment. That, but that one I create with my friends. There, okay? I just provide the ideas and I provide also the directions there, right? Okay? Because I actually didn't actually explore a lot of 3D animations there, the yeah, computer 3D animation, because at my kind, there is a stage of my kind of curious kind of developments. I have to stop 3D animations there because I know there's a lot of people, there's a lot of my friends basically were into that 3D animations kind of uh, styles of working there, right? So I have to focus a bit more into the productions, go into further in the pre-productions kind of works. So I, I've i learned 3D, I animate and model in 3D animations at the time I'm using 3D Studio Max. Just because I want to know how basically 3D animation works, so when I actually direct my own animations or any kind of people that actually want to work for me directly at a time, I can actually discuss with with the 3D team modeling and also animators itself directly because I know how they operate directly. Even though I didn't actually focus and put into my hands, right, dirty my hands, okay, to, to work with that kind of, uh, what we call the technical kind of stuff anymore. But I know how actually the thing works and I don't want people to cheat me directly because you know that okay, when you work with, with a lot of huge number of people there, okay, in your team, if you don't have enough kind of knowledge and understanding there, people will will not actually take you seriously when you want to direct them to work that way. Uh, for me, right, uh, there's a two kind of methods that I will do there, okay, in order to develop a quite a very teamwork kind of progress that okay? game. One of them is compromisations. That means I will do something that that can be applied from the level of team that we have, level of skill that we have there. So I will work this more practical way. Right? So if the team cannot actually push them into more highly recommended kind of animation styles because of the skill that the team have is quite limited there, okay? uh, in, in, in a short time when you want to provide the projects there, I will go into a bit more standard kind of styles of working but still look appealing and presentable. The other way around is basically a gangster kind of approach. Gangster, what I mean there, right, okay? You will work with some of the people who actually thought they have the best kind of skill they have, can provide for the teams. But the problem is the attitude there. So when it comes to the attitudes, it's the really most important thing that will show whether the projects are going to be succeed or not. So I will push, I will approach in different kind of way. So that's why if we don't have any knowledge there, if we cannot actually provide and talk about our directions to other people there who thought that they can do better than us, it has to remember one thing, all right? Without pre-production kind of team, the projects of animation won't be complete. Remember? Okay, that's why people who can model, mostly, they cannot actually model without the assistance of the drawings of the character designers department there, right? Okay? Or are direct this kind of implementation or, or input there, right? Okay, from there, or the ideas from creative directors there, or basically the visions of those uh, directors itself there, right? Okay? And also the script writers and the storytellers there. So animations they involve with with the number of teams there, right? Okay? But if you can work independently, if you train yourself to work independently. We actually want to train you guys not to become a workers. We want to train you guys to become the directors there, the leaders there. So those are the things that why we don't have any group projects for first animation fundamentals kind of subjects or module because we want to train you guys to become a leader. 
everyone can be capable to do that right now. You just have to gain enough kind of knowledge and you have to develop your skills along the way. Okay? That's the reason why. Right? You can work with your you can create your own teams later on, okay? But for me, my advice for diploma and also degree basically kind of uh, situations avoid that especially when it comes to work with your skills visual development skills there right for some other projects maybe you can but nowadays video production also we can actually work with very limitation kind of team members to develop a video kind of productions works or short stories there all right but depending on the content that you want to create you have to be more realistic there for me we can create any kind of imagination kind of stories there imaginary kind of stories there, there. but you know basically how realistic you can develop that or you can handle those projects okay it's a matter how realistic you can actually handling your project. Okay, guys. Just born in 1999. Right? Don't that mean I'm grandfather there right now? Uh, just born in 1999, Jonathan. Huh? Right. Okay. Uh, when when we actually have completed the module there, right? When you saw me outside there, don't forget to call me. Hi, Uncle. There, right? Huh? All right, guys. Okay, now. Okay, hopefully, right, okay, this kind of exposures will bring you guys a bit more and more kind of understanding there, okay? Even though there's a lot of things I can bear you guys, our learning experience doesn't stop, okay, until week 14 there, okay? It's a lifelong learning of experience, especially in animation. All right, so we have to go into from there, right? So about, about the techniques, the styles, the methods. Okay, we can go through more and more. All right. So that basically is a part of things that I actually have experience. I will share, and also I give you guys some ideas. Okay, type of animation directly, but. If you have learned or if you're really interested in animations, I would suggest don't limit yourself. Don't limit yourself there. What you learn in my class, for example, you have draw this kind of characters there, right? Don't limit yourself into five there. Do more from here. Do more from here there, right? Okay. If you limit yourself here, you will not find any kind of satisfactions there, right? Reason. Let me wait. Right. You won't find any kind of satisfactions, the joyful from your lessons there, right? Okay. So Tanya actually. You draw this one based on your reference or you just simply draw based on your kind of what we call the spontaneous kind of understanding there which one Tanya, are you here both all right okay now okay i want to show you guys here directly i'm going to stop sharing first i'm going to on my cameras here can I actually pin up this one there? Uh, enter the full screen. This is in the full screen only there. Can I actually blow up the screen there? Okay, 
Can you guys see my screen? Full of my screen over here. Yes. Okay. Good. All right, guys. So now, what I want to show you guys already. When I come to to draw basically your characters, I'm using pen directly to works. Okay. When I come to design any characters, as I actually have shown you guys on visual methods before this recipe, if you want to draw your ideas using the basic structures there, right? Just take a look how actually I work on that already. Uh, if you take a look at my kind of way of working with drawing pen here, actually, even though I'm designing a very simple characters like this. I'm drawing upside down, all right, up, outside, upside down there for it. But the thing is, the way that you control your strokes, right? The way you control the strokes there, it's really important when it comes to designing your kind of characters there. So even though I'm drawing a square there, right? I'm using a very confidence kind of line there to work there. very confident kind of line there so if you want to improve your kind of skills of creating your characters there right okay I would suggest for you to practice also your traditional drawing skills. Okay. Your traditional drawing skills there using the basic structures and shapes. Okay, that you work. I will show you guys also on digital kind of methods there again okay? using Photoshop how to draw them, how basically I start with this this kind of structures that you work. Alright. So Drawing in sketchbooks is one of the best way for you to practice basically your strokes at the same time. Right? Stroke at the same time there, right? Okay. So this is one of it, right? If you take a look at how at least this design, this is basically we need practice already. If I actually repeat some of the line, but I'm controlling the stroke at the same time. It's all is a matter of how actually I'm going to make sure that I can get the right kind of understanding, basically, for my design. Okay, it's very simple kind of design there, guys. But if you check, look it, not because I draw, because why actually I can draw the right thing, because I can actually develop the kind of balance of those design at the same times. They look like. They get ready to have a very good kind of kind of presentations, okay? To present them in the world, or okay, to the world. Okay? They look at like a finished product, but it's not. That's how actually we can develop basically, right? They look confidence for for us to show the people how it works there. Okay. So.
the animations is all about that kind of methods there. Okay, especially in 2D animations that you will see. Yeah. Basically for teams, uh, they cannot share together the Guys, are you still here there, right? Alright. Just now, basically, right, okay, suddenly, right, okay, my kind of housing areas, right, uh, they, they, they actually black out, okay, okay, I don't know why, okay, they black out, okay. So, luckily, okay, we're still continuing there, okay. Thank you very much for waiting there. So, let me continue back again because we still continue recording there, right? <laughs> All right, okay. Obstacles there, challenge there. Okay, when I come to my YouTube channel there, okay, because uh, I actually have been share also okay some of the methods of working okay you guys can see my screen sharing there right? okay one of the most important thing when we, we, we when we want to design or we want to sketch our ideas there okay 
make sure that we have the right kind of pressure strokes okay the pressure strokes here let me double check there okay okay we're still recording there okay. So when it comes to designing the characters there, okay, to design any kind of characters, we have to start with a head first. Alright? One single head, two single head, three, four, five single head, okay, to measure the alignment for the characters there. Alright, this is a simple analogy there first, okay? So let's just say you want to design a very TV, super deformed kind of characters, okay? Start a very simple kind of shape like this. Okay. From here, when we want to start to design there, this is basically the mid, the, the center kind of line there, okay, but not to center there because I just draw in a free form there, okay. From here, what we can do, okay, we want to start the character from any kind of shapes. Let's just say square uh triangles there okay this is the head of the characters the body part basically we're going to separate into two right okay these are going to be the body using those square there right and then the pelvis the legs and the right the limbs or what we call that the joining of the legs there right okay this is basically the knee there right okay so from here, the hands has to be balanced also with the palm directly. The shapes of the hands or the palm directly, I'm going to set, I'm going to simplify them, right, the shapes of it. So the shapes of it there. So uh, in order to develop the right kind of drawing skills, you need to understand also the anatomy, okay, when you design the characters there. Always, always sketch it out your ideas like this first, and then where the placement of your eyes, mouth, or maybe nose there, okay, at the same time there, okay. So these are going to be the eyes, maybe these are going to be the nose if your character has a nose, and the lips or mouth areas there, okay. Always, always sketch it out, okay? okay? Some of the shapes, okay? We're playing with a very sh simple shape there, okay? Circle, triangle, uh, half of circles there, okay? Now, if you remember what you you do for your uh, works in your IBN before there, okay? You're playing with some kind of shapes there to design your characters there. But right now, all the shape that we can create, we can break it out there, okay? So if the eyes, if I want to use a very round, big eyes like this, another eye shapes over there. Uh, the nose, I don't know whether I can use this L shapes of the nose like that. We can design there, okay? It's all about design things there and the lips there, right? To make the characters more cheerful and also we can actually design also the, the eyebrows on it, right? If you take a look at this design, this kind of what we call that uh, template of the design, they will look a little bit more appealing there, even though you want to design the characters based from what? All right, like circles, from circles here, right? Don't draw circles like this one, huh, guys? Uh, remember, this is the wrong way to draw. Draw circle, one single line there, right? From here, all right, the eyes itself. You want to draw the middle shapes of the eyes, nose, and lips. All right, okay, what you can do from here, you can use the same shapes. And of course, don't try to draw the eyes look like this one there, right? This is one of the bad ideas to design the characters. Okay. We 
because the character doesn't look appealing when you use square for the eyes. They look a bit more evil. Unless when you design an evil character. Huh? Okay, from here, I'm going to design the lips or the mouth itself. All right? There's a lot of way to design mouth there, okay? Right? You can actually go through with it, okay? Draw the mouth, okay, when it smiles, right? Like that. Right? Using half of the, like, a banana kind of shapes there, right? Okay? This is a banana kind of shape there, right? Draw the mouth there. Uh, what else? Okay, the eyebrows. Thick eyebrow, low eyebrow, okay? Up to you guys there to works. You want to draw the ears, go ahead. Shapes of the ears there. Shapes of the ears from here and then you improvise them into here right the shapes of it break it down there and then you want to draw the hair basically the nose right shapes of the nose there right and then what else you can do you want to draw the hair shapes of the hair for example shapes of the hair there right so all this kind of understanding and methods it's all based from your understanding of the anatomy there. The body itself. This is not the body, right? If you draw the bodies from the shapes, look like a fat. You break down the shape there. Okay? This is only a guideline for us there. So these are going to be the legs, half of it, half the shapes of the circles. And then I'm going to draw the shapes of those. Can you see there, right? Okay? All the all those designs that I create from here came from simple shapes there. If some people say that I don't use shape for my design, look at what I've done right now. Everything came from shapes there. Shapes there, right? Even though the palm itself there, right? You cannot see it might be my hand there. And I can render them up. So if you can break through with all this kind of design first, like this, before you get to create any kind of characters later on. Okay. Using the same shape circles, for example. Circle is a part of the standard kind of tight line okay? from here. See, uh, I like a little bit more like a complex kind of design there. I like design robot there, okay? For example, if you use your imagination without any reference, last words. Okay. Robot came from where? Square, triangles, and then you can break down the square back again, right? And then you can create also some of the elements over here. From here, what else? Right, the eyes itself, the nose, maybe you want to make those robot look cool. Okay, there, four examples there, right? But the more complex that you add from your design, the more kind of challenges and responsibility that you will have. So, the body half of it right here, there, okay, this is the body that shapes. Right, and then this is going to be the legs there, right? See, shapes there, right? The legs there. Half of it, okay, these are going to be those hands. Don't look too hands there, right? From here, there's a lot of things we can do. Here, everything is all about shapes. Everything is all about shapes there, right? There. From here. The robots there, right? So, when you have sketched it out right, next thing is what you can do. Can clean up the line that is because if you practice in the right kind of way, of working with your own design, you will actually have a 
lot of privilege to design any kind of way of working there. But of course, whatever that you're going to do, always be practical there, right? Because the more options, the more complex kind of ideas that you create for your design, they will apply also, they will actually, uh, what we call that, demand, right? They will demand your kind of responsibility for your characters. Okay? So if I want to design a bit kind of improvisations here. So this will be the shoulder kind of pad there, right? So I will make sure the hands of the characters will be balanced there, right? Enough line there for those design. Okay. So spend more time in designing, right? Your characters by looking at some people's content, right? I watch robots a lot. There, okay. I love Gundams, even though I didn't actually follow basically the whole stories there, okay? Because Gundams is very quite heavy stories there, right? Okay, I don't have for me, even though uh, at that stage I can't actually watch a lot of anime, but right, like Gundams, uh, Guren Lagan there, right? Okay, uh, Evangelion there, okay, uh, Toshio Daimos, the old versions there. Uh, Robotax, what else there, right, okay, uh, Mospida there, right, okay, uh, my time, there, okay, there's a lot of robots, like okay? Transformers, Voltron, right, I have that kind of privilege there to design, to, to, to love all these kind of characters there, right, but I actually know what I want, and I always love design there, right, okay, that's why, if you take, if you take a look how actually I create all these kind of ideas here, it's all based from the experience that we have, right? To work with it. Okay, we two, right? Session two, session one, and right here. So those are the things that made me right now there. Right, it's not actually going to be a very easy pass if you don't enjoying yourself there, right? Okay, this is only a rough sketch, but from that rough sketch you know basically where you want to go from here and of course when we design the characters we're not looking into one particular kind of positions there right so we always always okay have to develop those understanding design from a different kind of posters there right Different kind of posters, side profiles there, for example. Right? Side profiles there. For example, there. Design those kind of things there, back again. Right? And of course, if you guys are familiar with gesture drawing, when you sketch your ideas, always find yourself to sketch your gesture drawing first. Is what I say from this sketchbook that you saw just now. I'm using the gestures kind of line there to design those characters there, right? For example, here to design any characters there. This is basically the gestures kind of line there. Okay. Gestures kind of line there, okay? And to and basically what we actually draw right now. Using the guide, the line of actions, right? To design basically those gestures line for the movements, 
right to work with it okay so for today for today not only this week this week's okay for our friday we have another exercise there i want you guys to sketch at least 10 different kind of characters which you have designed before in adobe animate right but i want you guys to improve more on your skills of designing the characters by using this kind of methods only either you can use digital medias photoshop to sketch it out first using any brush that you want if you can find okay my kind of brushes i'm using a you can use uh you can explore directly using ultimate kyle uh, charcoal if you use photoshop or if you use any tablet you can use any kind of drawing brushes there brush that works or any kind of brushes that came from a cow brushes drawing stroke there are drawing styles that you can use them or if you use cash books right if you have your own sketch books you can use pencil but i would recommend that you sketch using ball pen right why if you use ball pen to draw you won't be able to erase one second thing is you will learn to control your pressures when you design your sketchy line for your gesture drawings in order to you design your characters there okay by using this kind of guideline that, that i actually give you guys that works you can explore more from there i want you guys to draw at least minimum is 10 different kind of characters that is okay improve more on your drawing skills from here right for today is first of numbers 2020 right? submit them latest on friday okay submissions on friday there right submit them this is the exercise right on friday enjoy more directly okay? have fun there first Friday are going to be four, right? Four of September there, two ten to twenty there, right? What times before we start our class? I bet you guys can draw more than ten after this. Okay, those are the things that we can do. All right, guys, you can do more than that. So if I can design, okay, right now I'm designing one, two, three, four, five. Guys, animation drawing has to be a little bit more loose, okay? Because when you design your characters later on, I want to see that you have a very continuous, loose kind of look and feel out of it. Okay? If you take a look at my previous design here, basic shapes there, right? I have a very loose kind of characters there using the basic shapes there, right? And they show a lot of personality and attitude. Personality and attitude for your design. Okay? There. After that, we're going to go through with that design using those head up animate or flash okay so those are the things that we have been go through right before uh, this is some of the design that i create using the same methods that i show you guys before using pen tools right using shapes tools using brush tools so you can see the difference there right change the colors at the same time okay, this is some of the methods also that I actually that I actually create basically to design these characters there right? okay same goes that I show you guys just now there okay three head of character designs or you can use two head of character design always use circle of shapes as a part of the guide 
or foundations when you design your characters there. You understand what I mean? Okay, try to clean up the line at the same time there, right? Okay, that works. This kind of routine, basically, we need to practice a lot. Okay, this is also some of the sketch demo that I create, okay, for subjects previously there, right? Okay, some actions and posts. If you just want to provide some action and post for your characters, each of characters after you draw that 10 characters, or you want to include from that 10 characters, right? You design a few kind of posts, go ahead. Because in learning experience, when we are suggest to draw 10, basically we need more. We don't actually write down that because we want to see your efforts of working on it, efforts there, right? the student effort and interest there. Like you guys, when I was like you guys, if I have this kind of opportunity right here that I know that I can score with the subjects, I will push my way from there. Okay, I'm not asking you guys to draw a complex kind of design there, but if you want to test, you're able to test yourself, go ahead. If you want to challenge yourself, go ahead, there, guys. It's really, really what we call that privilege, okay, and nice to see students enjoying push yourself because you know you can score, okay. We will learn also background design, right? Uh, work in Photoshop later on there, okay, those other things. This is some of the uh, very good, simple GIF characters that I actually get from from internet there, right? See? The simple kind of motions make more smoother that in Adobe Animate or Adobe Flash, you can use them, right? It's a matter of way that we are going to working on it. you have saw basically those animations before they right sample saw animations there so what you can do right now you create your own versions there right? you need to create your own versions there okay guys any questions there so far guys okay so just like I said there right okay um, what we need to do for today for this week around two days there two or three days there, right okay? try to work with your own kind of character design back again using sketchbooks or Photoshop to redraw and to make it more flexible or dynamic for your design you 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 need to find that kind of that moment that you feel comfortable and can really really enjoy working with your design you have those design right here okay. i know how to work with this kind of design very simple there all right i know how to work with this kind of design to make it more appealing but my suggestions Back again, Tanya, okay? Take a look back again. For me, all right, these characters here, okay, if I want to share a bit there, right? This one, I have to, I will share the screen there first. So you 
you guys can see the screen there, right? So for me directly, uh, same goes to everyone there. For me, these characters, they have one. Roughly, we have two shapes. This one basically have only one there shapes there, right? Of structures there. This one also have one only there, right? This one basically maybe have two, right? This one maybe have two there, right? See, understand this? And then from here, this one there, right? Shapes over here. Shop there, right? Huh? And then, yeah, the legs there itself there. Make it more simple there. To make the to make sure the characters is on the ground there. So I'm going to realign and then realign basically those eyes and the uh, feet there, right? This is my version there. From here. I can design these characters in same shapes, but right now, side profiles there. Right? Side profiles there. Maybe like this there. Right? Have the right kind of alignment there, right? Three quarter view, for example, here. Three quarter view, side meter, right? It's going to be look like this. There. So draw bigger, I don't draw small, right? Uh, not too big, right? Because sometimes it's hard for you to control. You can see basically the methods of this. From there, you can actually draw any kind of exaggerations on these characters itself. Right? The pose there, right? There, right? Exaggerate the video, right? Just playing around with your characters there, right? Those other things there. It's all of how to manipulate and create the exaggerations on the old design there before you're going to animate them. Same goes to be designed as any other, right? Shift there. If I want to redraw them, I will make it a bit more. Difference there from here. Design also like the dragon from for the dragon sometimes about this one. Okay, but it's all the matter of experience there actually. Watch Digimon also, right? That's basically a time when I actually create one of the projects, right? Uh, that time basically is my one of the months that I create for not movies, but basically for hours, um, what we call that, 
pilot kind of ground crew check day. So at the times I'm actually alone actually develop the concept even though I have given this ideas from my management directly to my boss directly. So no one basically, even though all people actually in, in my teams, we have 10 people around us directly, who actually have their own kind of opinions, how to work with, with the project there, but the directions is not there. So I have to create some directions there for my team basically can be used as a guide to develop the project itself. I spent more than two months working without any directions, the fixed directions there. Even though my boss also doesn't have the right kind of directions to work to 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 launch the projects directly. So what I do, I do all my research and I have one of my friends also we've been helped me directly. Basically, one one of my housemates okay, is my good friend also. Okay, when I was working there, okay, uh, learning there, okay, uh, studies there. So we have this kind of friends who have also have same kind of interest in animations there. Okay, he also have like to study and watch a lot of animations. So I asked him to help me to develop the structures there. I give him the ideas of the backstories and I discuss and discuss in one single night. Okay, I remember that okay, that was in around 11, I think 10 to 11 o'clock at midnight and we discuss until the 6 in the morning there. Right? We discuss the structures, everything there, okay, to, to make sure that I can actually guide the team there. Right? So when we when we study this, then we uh, develop the structures and stories. What we have in our mind is Digimon and the, the concept of story of Digimon. That we don't copy from that stories, but we take the ideas from them. Right about the virtual worlds, about the virtual kind of uh, what we call that idols that people love to use there, right? Okay, to create at a time there, right? Okay. Even though nowadays also they, we have the right. So I create from that kind of Digimon kind of concept, stories and ideas to create the, the project that I have done at the time directly. Even though the project, we managed to get all the teams back into the track, right? The project succeed or not, it doesn't matter. Today. The matter is the process because I can manage and present it well from there, even though we have a lot of, basically when it comes to design and production works in animation, in any kind of project, it's a war. It's basically, it's a war field there, okay? In the battlefield there. So you have to fight against all odds there, right, okay? You have to fight against all the situations that you know whatever that you do is true and practical for the team. It's good for the team there, right? It's a bittersweet, it's a very challenging, and it's worth it. For me, it's worth it because I put my interest on there and I do research to make sure that whatever question that people ask me, I can counter it back. If I don't know the question, the, the answer basically, I will keep quiet there. That's how actually we work. We don't actually try to defensive ourselves without having enough evidence. The, the evidence is you have to show. I have done a lot of design of the character design, a boy character design at that age. I do refer from Final Fantasy IX, if I'm not mistaken, from there, right? Kind of concept, ideas, characters, Digimon, to any kind of number of content that I can create, can I can create as part of my reference there. And I design my characters towards from there, right? It's really tough, it's really hard, but I enjoy the process. I really enjoy the process there, right? Because it's all worth it there, right? Because it makes me what I am right now. It made me feel better right now. Because in terms of successful projects, I really frustrated with it. But 
terms of the process of knowledge I gained from there, I really, really proud of what I've done. So it makes me share with other people there. I can share also the techniques and methods that I actually go through. And it works. But it's actually it's hard work there. All right, so guys, don't put yourself in a position to be so so only to do your works. Be more patient and patient to work on that. Okay? Because the journey that you actually going to create is all worth it there. I promise you it's all worth it at the end there, right? The only thing that makes you stop is only yourself, your mind. Okay? All right, guys. So, any questions? Again, no? Right. Hopefully, you know what you do there, okay? But you can actually throw, because this is the process of development there. Don't worry. That. Make mistakes. It's actually, it's a, it's a part of the process of learning. If you don't make mistakes, you don't learn from there. But always, always understand why you make mistakes. Can you improve from there? Can you see the difference between my drawing and sketches? Sketch, the right, rough sketch. And yours. Can you see the difference between how I actually develop that basic structures and shapes of the characters, foundations, and yours? If you want to learn to develop the skill from there, you have to practice along the way. Those are the best ways to work. To work. Anything else you want to ask me there before we dismiss? Sir, so yes. for the for the exercise, we must digitize it, right? Or we can just show the sketchbook. You can show the sketchbooks, or you want to digitize also. It's up to you. Okay, okay. Thank right? you. If you can work, if, if you can work both also, I'm good with it. You know, guys. Okay. If you will experience from what I actually have, will give you. Out there, okay, normally, I love to give some freedom for students to present in the best way that they can. I just online, I just provide the guideline and also the way it, it should work there. Right? If you can find the best way also to present it well, go ahead. Okay, it always will come there, okay, because I don't want you to just restrict yourself only to present only what you know. I want you guys to explore from there. Okay? I want you guys to explore from there. Because as animators, as a creative kind of designers, we need basically to explore. Experience the explorations on ourselves there, right? Okay? Don't just put it as a part, oh yeah, this is a 20%, 40% mark, or 10% mark, so I think it doesn't look, basically, it doesn't look quite uh, enough there, right? Okay? For the efforts, it doesn't mean that. Because whatever process that you've been working on, they will actually give you the life experience that you will learn from there to develop yourself. All right, guys? Okay, thank you very much then. If you so thank you very much also for coming to the classrooms and take part in our modules over here. And basically I'm I'm enjoying myself like at the moment so key in any of my classes when I'm sharing the things that I know and, and guide my students there, right? Okay? So thank you very much again. All right, have a good day. And I see you guys okay on Friday here, okay? And also some of you guys also might be might to join me later on, right? Okay? Uh tomorrow morning, right? So I see you guys also tomorrow morning in Haley's there, okay? For AI kind of uh what we call the character design works. Thank you very much and have a nice day.